back. This is the second, uh, hopefully of just two videos uh, for the guided here this week. We've modeled up the shaft more or less uh, up till now, fairly close to the sketch or to the supply drawing. We're going to move on to the next stage here, which is ring grooves and all the rest. We have deviated very slightly so far uh, with this dimension at the front. We've moved from one inch more or less to 25 millimeters, which is as required by this new bearing uh, because we don't have access uh, and SKF Canada to inch uh, bearings of this size. So next we're going to use McMaster car from here uh, and the inch sizes, or again, we're going to get into metric here as well, because it's a metric shaft now in this area at the two ends, whereas the rest of the shaft is inch. Welcome to Imperial shafting. So moving on, uh, we haven't done any fillets yet. Those will be last. So our next step is the ring grooves. We'll follow it up with the key waves. Next. So let's just hide our canvas for a moment and try and figure out what we've got here. The radius is 0.42. That's not very useful. That's metric. In the measuring tool, we can ask for secondary units, millimeters, and we can show snap points. That's just the point. Let's try and get the radius. There we go. It's a little small. Uh, you can grab it down right on the corner, make it bigger. Its diameter is 25. So this is a metric part. If we restart and measure somewhere up here, we'll be able to see inch. Okay, so we've got both going on here. Happens frequently. So we have 25 millimeters diameter. Let's go ahead here and look, take a little look at the canvas. He has a ring groove here, a certain size. Because we changed the shaft size here slightly, shaft diameter, we might find this is a little different and it might actually be in metric. So let's go ahead and do that. So McMaster car, I have it right here. You can also do a search. And I'm after a ring. The ring will tell us, as we've learned in the lecture videos, the ring groove. Uh, this is metric. And it's an external ring. And we're going to go for standard. It makes the OD a little more serious, uh, less serious, a little less variable, 25. And we don't, we haven't been told we're going crazy strong here. So normal or standard ring is fine. And we can use stainless or whatever, but let's just go for zinc plated. 25 pack is American $1140. So it's cheap stuff. Nice. Let's have a look, product detail. And we did this before in other videos, so this is not new again or anymore. So I won't go at this too much. The thing I am interested in though, is these numbers. Uh, there's some clearance that we, did, that we don't know anything about the surrounding for the shaft right now, so that's fine. But then we've got this groove diameter here. So we've got groove depth, all that stuff. So let's get a short a screen uh, snapshot of this. Actually, let's get the part number. So there's my part number. And I am gonna take also some, I'm really interested in this groove diameter right here. So let's do that. Nice. Now, while we're at this, I would like to download it. So let's get a step and download. I am gonna move this uh, into place immediately here. So, Again, just keep an eye on the history. I'm gonna joint this right away. I want to joint it to the front of the bearing. It's facing the wrong way. To begin with, right? I'm just gonna leave it there. I might take this joint away later or modify it based on what comes up next. And see what's going on here. It looks good. Let's have a look. 
a wireframe perhaps. There's, there's the way these things work. Uh, the rings are actually an offset diameter. It springs open. Again, like our discussion from last time, ad nauseum. They're, they're modeled as shipped, so just loose. When they get mounted onto the shaft by pulling the ears apart, it's slipped over, they get deformed. So, but we're gonna place them as, uh, as shipped. So there will be some overlap here. It's fine. So there's our joint. Uh, let's go ahead here and modify the sketch though. Um, the problem is with all this stuff, especially with the shaft stuff, is that you tend to get wrapped up in the history where we can't uh, actually figure out uh, where the ring groove has to be. Let's have a look at the uh, oh, sorry, let's just keep here. What I want to do is project this bearing onto the sketch, but I can't because the sketch is happening before the bearing. Unfortunately, we get stuck here because the bearing needs the shaft to be positioned. So the jointing, which puts the bearing in the right spot happens necessarily after, the, after this uh, sketch. One way to get past this is it's kind of a, tedious way, uh, but it does work, is to actually set a parameter. So first, let's measure something here. The width, oh, let's make sure we're getting the right thing here. The, the width of the bearing down here at the lower race, the inner race, is 17 millimeters. I'm actually gonna make a parameter here. I'm gonna call it, uh, I don't know if it names these things properly. Let's see if it gives it a name. Um, looks like I'm hunting through the book here. This is bearing left. It doesn't actually have a label for it. Let's call it bearing A or bearing one A. Uh, our deep groove, it's probably up here. Uh, width, it's in millimeters and it's 17. So you can acronym this down or whatever, but it's up to you. Okay, let's do the other bearing while we're at it. So again, let's measure the race that we're interested in. 27. So again, parameter. We'll call this roller. Uh, oh, groove. Roller width. Let's call it. It's not width. It's not the right. Groove is not the right thing. Let me change the other one. And that's 27 before I forget. And say, okay, let's name this guy. Just click once. It should highlight deep. Oh, this deep <laughs> ball bearing, of course. Sorry, roller bearing width, width and width, 17, 27. Okay, now can this get outside of our history dilemma? Let's have a look here, try it out. Our groove, our ring is placed. So you can either hide this if you wish uh, or just leave it, doesn't matter. Uh, we might end up moving it. So let's go ahead here. We're gonna add a little extra piece to the sketch. This is on our left side here, dimension. We've got those new things. Oh, nice. There it is. And that's an inch. So that's fine. Uh, sorry, not dimensioning. So let's now have a look at our requirements here. I've got a screenshot. Which one is this? Don't know. Hold on. That's our 25 millimeters. So let's have a look here. Our groove here, 
diameter 23.9 millimeters, 1.3 wide. So, checking 23. I can highlight that if I want. And the width 1.3. There it is. Oh, right. We have to fix that revolve. So there we go. Get in there and just, you might have to hold control to turn off the preview. No, it doesn't work. I'm doing this on purpose. I'm trying to click it. Why, why? And then it's because the sketch is hidden. There it is. And there we go. Now, you'll notice there's a little bit of leeway here. So it's up to you how you want to do this. Um, for now, I would say just leave it. Um, we'll mark it flexibly. Uh, so there is a little tiny gap here. This is obviously some leeway to fit the ring in. Uh, it shouldn't be perfect. We're gonna fill at the bottom of this later, uh, but after, for now, that's it. Looks good. Let's do the same on the other side. Same process. Ring. This time we want a 30 millimeter ring. Unfortunately, it goes all the way back. Oh, sorry. Let's make sure I got the right one. External. And let's make this a little bigger. Uh, we want metric, we want external, we want standard, and we want 30. Zinc plated again. Let's look at the product detail of that. Take a screenshot of that, hold on here. Make it a little bigger. I wanna see the part number. In case I lose track. And I'm also quite interested in this groove here. There we go. And don't forget to place it, so download that guy. Fine. Joint it immediately. It's on the wrong side. There we go. And if we want to have it, the ears poking up the same way, just rotate it 180. Adjust our sketch. So if I can get in here, figure out where, there it is. Anywhere is fine, just to add it sketch. We've got a little rectangle to build here. So left, line, sorry. Let's make it nice and big so I can see what's going on. Nice, no open ends. Now we've got a parameter here. This is the roller. Looking for width. Jumps to the wrong side. Let's pull it back. Doesn't make any difference, but this is clear. Let's see here, our new screenshot. Mm. Make sure I got the right one. I think that is the right one. There we go. 28.6 millimeters. It's not what I want. There we go. Nice. And the width, 1.6. Get the units as well. Again, make sure the sketch is turned on. This time we can see it. So now we can click somewhere on this shaft, edit feature, and then just simply take away that groove. You see our ring grooves, our ring sitting there in there quite nicely. Perfect. There's chamfers to come here and all that sort of stuff, but for now, looking good. Tidy up our dimensions as much as we want, just to keep things tidy.
bearing ends are done, except for the chamfer and the fillets. Moving on to the hubs. The hub, uh, we're just gonna model as blocks right now. So we're gonna add some extra bits in here. So let's go ahead and edit our sketch one more time. And I'm actually gonna place, uh, let's see here, what's the best way to do this? I'm gonna place this uh, all in one piece. Should we do that? Sorry, I'm just trying to, maybe we should use a different sketch. No, let's just keep going. Do some constraints. Make sure things are horizontal. This is parallel to what? To its okay, so that's four to five. So let's go let's go with some dimensions. These are usually jaffered. It's not fifteen, four to five. And we want this to be on this line. Now I'm gonna build these up first. So now you can do copy paste and all the rest, but let's just be somewhat efficient here. Just try and line them up. Again, lots of perpendiculars or whatever. It, it's up to you how you do this. Um, like I like them to be I like parallel and you can use, once it's 45, you can use perpendicular. You can do collinear, uh, but we don't need that because we're gonna be snapping on here. Uh, so some things might be cool in here, like these top edges. And maybe equal sizes for these chamfers. And some horizontality inside of this. And we do have a size. So this guy is, let's turn on our canvas maybe turn off our analysis, there we go. So this guy here is 1.5, so let's put a dimension to that. This one, the second one here is two. Nice, now we can start dragging these around. If I draw a box around the whole thing, I can drag it and then do some coincidence. So this canvas is getting in the way. Click away, click away, get rid of the canvas. Um, all these constraints are getting crazy. You can show them all, turn them off, sorry, by just clicking away. <laughs> if I actually had it active, there we go. And the other side of the chaffer should be down here on the bottom of this guy. So you and you, you and you. Uh, how tall these are is immaterial, but let's just give them a size of some sort, say like five. And we are gonna figure out what this canvas size, it's implied here. The radius here is 0.13. I'm gonna put these, both of these chamfers here at point one five. Fixes them all up. The profile has went back to fully defined. Perfect. Now those are gonna be our hubs. Let's go ahead and make those first. I wanna go all the way back here, right click down there, roll history marker to there. And let's make two more bodies. Now, interestingly, fusion will perfectly happily allow you to do two bodies at once. And I'm gonna make new bodies with these. Um, it's entirely up to you. You could also go for new components. It's fine. Actually, let's do that, that makes sense. And we'll just say okay to that. We get a component, we'll call it the hubs. So if we're got shift N turned on here, we can get them colored. Then we roll our history right out to the back again. There's our badly modeled hubs, right? So missing some stuff there. Let's fix that up. Uh, 
There we go. So we're not really bothered what those are. Um, like, so for example, if you find this too much, you can make it smaller. It's entirely up to you. Um, we are, well, let's just stick all together. Let's all make it four. <laughs> there we go. So here's our hubs. We're gonna use these for our keys. No, not our, key. well, our keys and our rings. So working away here. Next step is gonna be our rings. Before we do that though, what is our diameter? Get the sketch out of the way. Radius 0.813. And what if I want to know its diameter? I'm not bothered doing the math. Let's try one more time. Diameter 1.625, place. I'm actually writing that down because I'm gonna forget. 1.625. Rings again. And we're gonna use the same one twice because it's the same diameter. External, inch, standard, 1.625. Oh, what's 1.625? What is that? 1.625. Uh, what? Hold on. It's more than a half. Is it maybe five eighths? There it is. One and five eighths. One and five eighths. There it is. And again, we're going with zinc for everything. So there's our first one. Well, there's our oh, there's our only one. So it looks like. Let's get this bigger again so I can get a snapshot of it. Where's the part number? And I want this groove here. Nice. Uh, don't forget to play it. Don't forget to add it down, uh, download it. There we go. Did that work? Do it again. Don't care where it starts. I'm gonna joint it in here again. Sometimes the analysis, this section view gets in the way, so we can kind of get stuff set up. So let's do that first, J for joint. I'm gonna discover a problem here, so it's good. And strangely positioned for now, let's go to have the ears up again. Say, okay, there's two of these. Ignore this problem. We're going to fix this dilemma here in a second. This it's way too big. So next is we. It's tempting to just get it again, but what we should do is just copy it. So if you have it highlighted, press Control or Command C, and Control Command V, put it right back where it was. But there's two there now. Let's go ahead and join this. So join the other side of it now. Nice. Let's make sure everything is centered. Um, oh, sorry, we had the last one. Let's make sure everything looks good. Again, I'm looking for misalignments. I'm gonna hide the bearings because they're kind of messy for view wise, try and see if this is sorted out. So control nine gives us uh, views eight. We can see here 
this is centered correctly. Let's go ahead and turn our analysis back on. Just make sure I'm going to be keeping an eye on that as we go along. So make sure our joint is working correctly. Now, one thing we can see here is that our chamfer is way too big, way too big. So let's turn our sketch on. Go ahead here and figure out what's going on with this. 0.15 is what I picked before. Let's go down to 0 0.05, 0 0.05. That looks better. Key thing here is to make sure we're not sticking out here. It's not, it's better, but it's not great yet because our, that uh, ring groove is poking out past, it's still too big. Let's go here for smaller, 0.03. better. Borderline is still 0 0.02. I, think it's, I can almost see it. So there we go. Let's just keep that in mind when we're working away. Next, we obviously need to make a ring groove. So let's edit the sketch. Again, oh, while well, we're at this, uh, left hub and right hub are one and a half, two. Maybe we should go ahead and do this. Left hub width 1.5. Right hub width. There's a way to get this automated, but for now we'll just put it in manually. Now when we edit our sketch, we can use those widths. So we've got our same story as before. I'm gonna do them both at once. So the same thing over here. Making them big enough to click at a distance. So I can edit those guys. I'll make them equal. And I'm going to make them also collinear. Get out, get out of there first. Pre select. Collinear. Should be a good thing. Then next, we can use this sketch here actually, but let's be thorough. I'm actually going to adjust this and say this is our width right hub width, which won't change anything, which allows us to now we do a constraint to that size. Nice. So now left hub width, width is somewhere in there. There it is, left hub width. Nothing changes, but now we're using a parameter. So now I can use that constraint. Sometimes you can't get the point, you can hover and click and hold. Sketch point, not the line. And the edge, nice. Let's have a look at our, is that it? That's our screenshot. The diameter is 1.529. So dimensioning. Uh, it does understand what that double hash is. And then the width of the guy. Let's make sure it worked on both. Yep. Fully constrained, finish the sketch. Again, edit the feature to get rid of those little grooves. You might have to turn the preview on and off to get both of them. There we go, nice. 
And again, like we found out last video, there's some overlap and we've got a bit of a gap. Nice. Looks fine. Looks fine. Looks good. Now, almost there. Last but not least, the keys. Now, keys are complicated in a way and also fairly straightforward. The straightforward part is just picking them out because they're based on size. And Shigley gives it to us, so that's all fine. So we've got everything looking good so far. We've positioned everything. All we need to do is put the keys in for these guys. I'm going to put it up here at the top. So what does Shigley say? Why am I seeing an analysis still? There we go. Let's see labels these somewhere. Uh, here we go. In milled key weight times two, depth 0.188. So what I'm gonna do is actually place this and then make sure that there's enough, its, le it's length is good, if that makes any sense. So the length of this guy is 0.85. And the diameter of the key is 0.375. So let's do the sketches first. Then we'll go ahead here and place them. Actually, we're going to use them in the same orientation he's got in the drawing here. So, because then we can use our sketch. One more time. Edit the sketch. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here now. So you can actually also hide dimensions if you wish. So I'm gonna start by drawing a lozenge shape. Uh, in Fusion, it's actually called a slot. And we want a center to center slot. Let's do the one we know about. I'm gonna go and use it, stick to that center line, get the two points about right, and put it down, dimension it. Point eight five, and our diameter. You can measure this dimension it either way. Point three seven five. We can also see how far away it is here. This is a strange number. Point six three. What it might what might it be better known as? Five eighths. Oh, the dimension hides because we're not showing them. So 0.65 is 5 eighths. We've got 0.85 and 0.375, which is probably familiar. Is that 3 eighths? Yes, maybe. Yeah. So there we go. Now I want to make the same thing again. So I'm gonna use constraints to do this. So again, a slot, so slot center to center, there it is. Just stick it right onto the center line. And we can just use equals here. So equal length for the center to center and equal diameter, put the same one. All we need here is this distance, 0 0.38, 0 0.38. Is that 3 eighths? Probably. So let's dimension that, oh, dimension that. That's not, <laughs> sorry, that's not a dimension. Dimension that. Let's see, it's slightly off. Gonna be worried, maybe a little worried about that, maybe not. It's not clear, so, but, there is other ways to do this. Like he's got three eights here. This is maybe not the best way to dimension these guys. Like maybe what I should be doing is putting a point here. So point, I would like to know where the middle is. It's not how you spell point. I'm gonna put a point in the center of this and dimension it as this by two. So the dimension from the end of the hub is that this value divided by two are known as three quarters. Let's do the same over here. So I don't like this dimension here. Get rid of that. 
do the same thing. Put a point in the center of the slot and dimension it using the width of the hub. It's much safer. So then that's using an on the fly formula. It's right in the middle. It's not quite what he's got. And we can maybe adjust this. But for me, let's go with that. There is some problems here, but like the, for example, there's pi wrapped up in here and all this stuff. So we might get some small problems. Again, that's probably not too bad. There we go. Finish the sketch. Nothing happens. But what we're going to do here is actually go ahead here and make some, doing a SOLIDWORKS special there, double. We're going to go ahead here and try and figure out how far to extrude this. So go for extrude. Pick the profile. There's two of them there. Now, if we just cut this out, it goes right through the part. <laughs> it's not quite what we need. So what is or what is Shigley saying here? He's saying, where are we here? The depth is 1.18. Get out of the way there. The depth is 0.188. Right. So what we need to do is figure out how to get the distance. We're going to offset. We're going to start somewhere. Now, what's the diameter here? It's that guy, 1.625. Now, that's the diameter. So we have to oops, divide that by 2. Starts right on the top, minus the offset. The depth is 0.18, so minus 0.188, ah, perfect. Distance, just say all. Now they're both the same. So this makes our life a little easier because now we can just add some extra nice to them both at once, perfect. Seems right, seems okay, everyone's happy. So we've got half the diameter at that spot. We can parameterize this in a second and say, okay. There's our key slots. Let's go ahead here and just do a parameter. Profile. There's that one, that's D7, copy that. So then our extrude, which is, even though it's history, Next, it's, this is an order of what we do it in. Let's replace the 1.65 with our dimension. Is that working? D7. Now, what's going on here? The reason is that D7 has an inch already included in the dimension, so we can probably get rid of that. There we go. Say okay, nothing changes. Let's revisit that just for a second here. Um, when I started doing this, if I put D7, it's already building up inches. So when we looked at it, we saw the inch here. I had to delete the inch because D7 is in inch. So you have to be a little careful with that. It, you'll sometimes have this moment of, whoa, what's going on? The D7 includes the dimension or the unit, sorry. D7 is the dimension. D7 includes a unit, so if you've got extra units, it will fail. You have to be a little careful. Nice. Now, what I want to know is how long are these guys? So, let's use the measure tool one more time. They're both the same. Make sure snap points are on. I'm going to try and get the full length of this guy. May not give us what we want. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's just given as the center because it thinks it's an arc. What's the size of the arc? Diameter, 0.375. So we've got essentially this. So we've got 0.85 plus. Sorry, I can't do that. Peacock, my old friend. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, because I'm adding two radiuses, so that's one diameter, 0 0.375, 0 0.85. Let's undo it to see what we've got here. 0 0.85, 0 0.375. Yep. Yep. So copy that. 1.225. Place the key. Nope. Yep. Key. Round key. Let's make sure we get that length correct. We want inch. And we're after 1.225. That's about one and a quarter. That's all they've got. Height. Let's see here. The width. Uh, what's going on? Three eighths. This is three eighths. Is that right? Three eighths. Three point. Hmm. Three eighths. What is three eighths? Three. Let's get rid of all this stuff here. Three, enter, eight, divide. That is three eighths. So three eighths is our width. And we have no choice left. We'll try overall length again, but let's just make sure our length is as we think it is. Yeah, it's measuring from end to end. So this is our only option. So that's fine. So let's download that guy. Uh, because we're doing this the other way this time, uh, we're gonna have a little bit of an easier time with the jointing. So let's joint this guy in. I can put the center of this to oh, the center of this. It's 90 degrees off. There we go. Now let's copy paste that again. I know we're putting this in first now, it doesn't matter. Two of them now, say okay, let's hide the first one so we can joint the second one. We can pull it away if we want, it's not fixed. Joint, it might ask the position, just say no. So we'll put the back of that in the same spot on the other one. Let's have a look. I'm gonna hide my canvas. I'm gonna look right at the right view, hide my sketch. I'm gonna discover, I suspect, that this is overlapping, so let's have a look at the wireframe. Oh no. So our key is slightly too long. So let's adjust our sketch. Same on both. This 0.85. What we need is 1.25 minus the diameter. Ah, perfect. Did it work for both? Now, as we know from Orlov last couple of weeks ago, uh, we can't, we shouldn't be analyzing, we shouldn't be putting this on an exact thing here. So let's put an extra little bit here. Um, again, it's kind of, kind of arbitrary. Uh, two hundredths, uh, two millimeters, what is that? So Orlov is mostly metric. He tends to add a couple of like tenths of a millimeter on the length. Uh, can we do that? Sure. Um, we can also use peacock or something like that. So Orlov often goes for two hundredths of a, two tenths of a millimeter, so 0.2 millimeters. Let's do a conversion. Length. And we're in millimeters to inch. That's about almost a thou, seven thou, eight thou, sorry. So let's go an extra hundredth. So we'll go 10 thou. Yeah. 
So that is, let's just make sure, yeah, 127th of an inch. <laughs> so let's go to a hundredth of an inch. So which is 0 0.01. So let's adjust that. So we'll add a hundredth point. And then if we're, you know, say we're a little nervous of doing our math, we can say one divided by a hundred. Perfect. Now it's slightly off kilter. We're gonna have a small gap here. That's okay for the modeling. We've been doing that for the rings and everything. So I'm happy to leave it as is. Like per, people tend not to center things in the middle. So that's all fine. We get both because we've been using equalities as constraints. So that's our final answer. That, all that stuff, plus an extra hundredth to give it some gap so we don't have it over constrained. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. We'll go right to the end of the history. There we go. That's a lot of work, but not bad work, I hope. We've got a whole bunch of skits going on. We've got keys and slots and all the rest. Uh, we have good shaping so far. Everything's looking fine. The only thing left here is just to put some fillets and chamfers down. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do it in the using the sketch as a guide. So this will be our last step. So let's go ahead here and isolate the shaft. Uh, one way is actually just turn off the visibility of all these guys. Just press V. They're all still there. So we're at the end state here. So now let's turn off our analysis so we can see our canvas. I'm going to use, uh, it's tempting to put it in the sketch and I often do, but this time for clarity, we're going to put the fillets and the chamfers at the end so as a feature. Let's start with the chamfer. It does, does work, whatever, chamfer. What chamfers do we have? Let's hide the body. Let's have a look at the thing here. Got one at the end here. And at the end, so that's all we've got. So let's put one at each end. And what size do they have? 0 0.06 at 45. There we go, nice. That seems to be it. We can always edit that if we find other ones. So that's good. Next, fillets. F is a shortcut. Now, the grooves probably come with a guide here. No, doesn't seem to say. So let's go with what Orlo, uh, Shigley, sorry, I keep saying Orlo, what Shigley says. So in the grooves, we've got bottom groove. He's not actually giving us any size here. Let's have the groove. Let's look at the ring. And we'll turn on the analysis. Uh, the easy way to do the groove is to actually just, because we're not interrupting, we can just do the whole thing like a thou, or hundreds, right? It's quite big, so half of that. Smaller even, two thou. All right, this will also center the ring here, and we'll end up with a little bit of a system. Let's go for two thou for all the ring grooves. So there's our first one. So this would be essentially the radius at the tip of our tooling. If your thing's getting in the way, just hide them. And you can add, make sure we've got two faces here, two phases. There should be four altogether. That looks good. Now, let's look at our canvas again. Point. 
that's some sort of metric thing going on there. How about let's do this first easy one, the radius under the hub 0.13. So let's add, so let's add one here because we have a different radius. 0.13, nope, 0.13. That's quite a radius, right? So we might not be happy with that one. There's two of them though. Because we did have that problem with the ring 0.13 again out here. 0 0.075. So that's probably for the bearing. So the bearing will control that. But these are huge. So we do know that this is not going to be kosher for that the hub. So let's show the hub and turn on our analysis. And let's hide the canvas, which is just getting in the way. So we can see here it's not working. So the hub is not right. The hub's blocking that curve. So let's unselect those two guys and then pick a new one. So let's go for plus there. Turn the hub back on. So this is plus. Pull it out. Let's see, all oh, right, so it's point 0.2 there. So let's go for point. 0 0.015. It's the best we can do with that thing, right? So we can only do our best. Uh, turn off the preview. So that looks right. Sketch might be getting in the way. There we go. So we've got correct. <laughs> We're now down to the micron here, but we've got good uh, roughness here, but that's about the right size. Hilarious an artifact of the tessellation of the part so there we go micro detailing now what about the bearing let's say okay to that make kind of codify it set it in stone everything looks good fillets tiny fillets chamfers at the end got this big well-rounded fillet here which is good because we don't we don't want a kt for no reason the last is the bearing let's turn on the bearing uh, wherever they went, the two SKFs. Then let's check our values here, the deep groove. Minimum, oh, this is metric. The minimum is 1.1, so that's the radius. So we're around one millimeter for that guy. And the minimum here is, again, one, what's this S? Where's S? Oh, there's offset. So it's radius is here, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 ish again. Let's see what that affects. So let's go ahead here and adjust our fillet again. And we'll add a metric value here. And we'll type in one millimeter. Right. So if we go for 1.1, we'll discover that is the radius of the fill it on the, on that guy, so one millimeter. So this is all metric in here. It's not unreasonable, but we could go quite a bit lower just to be say, no, it's 0.5, it's 0.5 inch, 0.5 millimeters. Now, what is that an inch? Let's just see for, out of interest. So about two hundreds. So we could, if we wanted, change this to 0 0.02. It's up to you. Except it's not working. Come on. It's getting confused between the units, I think. So 0 0.02 inch or half a millimeter, whatever you want to use, it'll be about the same. I'm going to go for half a millimeter because this is a metric area. So let's make sure the other one works. Coming on where? So we'll add to that, making sure we're half active. It looks good. So there we go. That's our fully defined and finished shaft. Painful, uh, but that's okay. 
I'm going to hide the hubs because that's arbitrary. Turn on everything else. Not the hubs, sorry. And that's what we should be seeing. So there's our overall thing. So see here with the hubs showing, let's get a volume here so we can easily figure out if we've got it right. So given all this stuff, if you've done it exactly the same as I have, you should discover that the properties gives us the whole thing with the hub turned on. So these are hubs. So you'll have to get, make sure you get the right diameter here. The mass is immaterial, but the volume is what we're after. So the volume is, just write this down, 67. 0.835 cubic inch. So that's what we're going to be looking for. There we go. After all that. Um, so what we've got is our uh, good work done. If you want, you can rotate this around so we can see the key. Oh, forgot to do something. Or did we? Eh, do I care? The hubs are immaterial. Let's see. Let's leave the hub ungrooved. Uh, in the previous video, we did the grooves for the hub. Uh, we'll leave the hub because it's just a stand in. So the hubs are not really that interesting for us today. So we'll leave the hubs uh, just solid uh, without the groove in it. So again, no groove in the hub. So that's our volume uh, 67.835. It's not completely realistic, but the hubs are not uh, thoroughly modeled. Uh, hopefully that worked out. Uh, if you have any problems, swing on by to Discord and we'll be uh, sitting there waiting, hanging on your uh, every uh, question. Thanks for watching. Over to you.